What's up everybody? My name's Russ with RWGResearch.com. Today we're going to do something a little different. So I've been working on my 3D printer, the OSD, the oversized Delta, and I've been milling circuit boards. So I've been using this little air tool. I don't have it with me, sorry, but uh, basically it's this very small air tool and it's, it's perfect for the application. It's tiny. It's like just a little bit bigger than a Sharpie marker and it's perfect. It just run at 60,000 RPM happily on air. However, for me that's really difficult. I don't have a very good air compressor. I do have a small one in here and even though it's actually a pretty good size one, it just can't keep up too much. So, the idea is, is I want to make a spindle for my 3D printer so that I can mill with it. Now the problem with that is that right now the only spindle that you can just purchase off eBay for approximately seventy to eighty dollars even with the controller is a DC unit and I think it runs somewhere around twenty two twenty five something like that thousand RPM and um, what the what the problem is is that thing weighs a lot and I don't think that's a good choice so I got to thinking how can I fix that so in this video I'm gonna show you the spindle that I'm making from from parts that you can find and I'm gonna make some custom parts for it but uh, to make some parts and make this thing lightweight, compact, and powerful enough to do the job. So let's get started. Alright, welcome to my bench. Ignore all the scribbles. I was doing some math, but I am no mathemagician, so ignore that. Anyway, so my solution to this problem is very simple. First of all, I need a spindle. Now, I looked for a while and I found this. This is a particular handpiece for a rotary tool by this company and the number for it is H.43T and they call that a hand piece. So it comes with a couple of pieces, some collets, the tools to get the collets open. What we want what we want to deal with right now is this. So this is what I came up with. Um, yes, I can make a spindle myself. However, it's a lot smarter of me to go ahead and find something that's designed for this application and then buy it. And the main reason is because of this piece on the end. So this piece on the end has the collet in there. Okay, and this is what actually holds the tool. Alright, so this holds the tool against crimped in there. That is threaded. This piece is threaded. These are all machined parts. Very accurate. Wow, this is pretty heavy. And, uh... And that's that. This gets threaded onto there, you put your tool in there, and you're good to go. Now, one problem that I ran into is I couldn't find one of these that could hold up to the tool size that I wanted. This will hold all the way up to a quarter inch. All of my end mill tools that I own are actually 3 sixteenths. And so I wanted to have at least the 3 sixteenths, and most of these hand tools go just below that, and they won't, they won't get those tools in there. So this was my simple idea of, oh, let's find out what the lightest weight, this is actually sh the shortest one that they make with the biggest chuck that they make. And uh, although it's slightly pricey, it's got some high dollar bearings in it, and uh, therefore it will run really well. So this is the actual spindle I'm using. Now we need to worry about the motor. So how can I make a lightweight, high powerful motor? The one I found online, like I said, was DC. It's probably pretty silent too, and um, to be honest, it's it weighed a lot. This one doesn't weigh that much. So, the solution to that is an RC motor. So if you guys don't know, the RC community has gotten pretty heavy with their really cool, really, really cool equipment. So this is a 25 amp three phase motor controller, okay? DC in, three phase out. And what you do is you run this on a regular controller. So you put a pulse width modulated signal in here, depending on the pulse width, changes the speed of the motor. That's pretty simple. Now I can actually hook this up to my 3D printer and use it directly. So that's perfect for the application. This motor is tiny. Look how tiny this motor is. This is a 250 watt motor. It is tiny. If you take the shaft off, it's just over an inch by about uh, an inch and a little bit more than that. I mean, it's tiny, there's nothing there. So my idea is to mount this right here. Okay, so I'm gonna have a motor mounted on the end of this handpiece, and then I have a, the other problem with finding something is having a nice 
shaft right here, something that I can grip onto. So a perfectly round, uh, symmetric thing, and that is perfect. This is exactly one inch. The motor is just over one inch, and they're really, really close to the same size. So, what I'm going to do in this video is actually make the pieces to put this together, and this is going to be my spindle, CNC spindle, for my 3D printer. It's ultra lightweight. It, it really doesn't weigh much at all. As a matter of fact, it weighs a little bit more than my hot end, the way it is. I'm going to have a little bit more in there, but I'm going to take a little off, I think, too. So what I'm going to do right now is just go ahead and hook this controller up and show you how this thing runs, just the motor by itself. Okay, I got it all connected, but before I start, I want to talk about this motor real quick. So, this label that's on this box used to actually be wrapped around the outside of this motor. So you've got a balanced system like this motor, and they wrap a label around it which was overlapped, so it can't be balanced. Anyway, I took it off, but it's basically a turn a key. Uh, part number is P2627L-4200, a P26. So here's the actual barcode part number. I bought this from hobbyking.com, but uh, you know, no, uh, no support there. It's just where I got it from. But this motor, believe it or not, was like $12. This controller was about $9. Ridiculous. I've got 250 watts worth of power for just right at $20. Just ridiculous. So anyway, this motor, this 4200, is actually the kilovolt rating uh, per RPM. Uh, so 4200 RPM per volt. Sorry, the volt, volt per RPM rating. Anyway, 4,200 RPM per volt. This is a 11.1 volt motor. You can do the math. Right around 45,000 RPM for this guy. That's no load. With a load, it's about 37,000 RPM. Now, it's really confusing on torque ratings on these things, so I'm not even going to go into it. You can figure it out. I just know that this should be enough and adequate amount to do what I want. So this is crazy. For $20, you've got a 40... You know, you could get up to 40,000 RPM or even higher spindle speed out of this with not much load going on. It's just crazy. So I've got it connected to a DC power supply at the moment. This is a 32 amp, uh, 30, 32 amp, 12 volt power supply. So this is designed to run on multi um, battery pack voltage inputs, and so it'll handle the 12 volt, not just the 11.1. But if you think about it, um, the battery packs at full charge are actually higher than that anyway. They're at about 12.2. So I don't see a problem. So I'm going to plug this in. Hope nothing explodes. I've got this hooked up to this RC controller and module. Thanks to Battery Fill. You gave me this probably six years ago. And I've been using it for so much stuff. It's freaking awesome. Now like I said, I'm going to be connecting this to my 3D printer. But currently, this is the best method. So let me plug this in. Turn the remote on. Let me go ahead and plug this in and hopefully nothing blows up. Make sure real quickly I got the power supplies all right. All right. No good. It's on 220 volt. Imagine that. Try again. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> we are on. So you can hear it beeping. And that has to do with the controller connecting to it. And now it's ready. So, there you go. That is some serious power. So the outside of this motor is actually what's spinning here. This is an outrunner motor, or is an in runner. No, it's an outrunner. So this here is on the outside of the rotor. That's why it's an outrunner. And uh, it's kind of weird because this is all open. And this little part right here catches a lot of air. And I really don't think it was designed to suck air through because it has nowhere to go. <clears throat> so it makes a lot of noise is what I'm saying. So I may have to... I may have to work on that or close this off or something. So I'm going to run it again for you. Now 
Now I do have variable speed. I gotta kind of go slow with it here. So there's a pretty slow speed and all the way up. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna play around. Alright, so, you know, if I really wanted to hold this thing down while trying to start it up, um, it can be a little unhappy, but if you're talking about a little micro end mill on the end of this guy, I don't see a problem. Alright, so I can stop it, but holy cow, it burns my hands. Now, if I try to grab this, say... I don't think so. There's no way I'm stopping that. Okay, real quick, I want to talk about this handpiece. So, this handpiece is designed to have a flexible shaft, and inside there you can see there's a open-ended shaft with a hole in it with a key way on one side. So, I'm pretty sure this entire unit's going to be very, very, very balanced. However, I'm going to have to make a, a connection here and what I'm thinking about doing is taking the end piece off here, machining it down or cutting it. It might be a good idea not to modify this, just in case I wanted to use it with the regular flex shaft. But I don't have one anyway, so it doesn't matter. So I think the best thing is to go ahead and just make this a permanent spindle unit and, uh, and see what we can go with that. I may actually have to drill out these holes which are tapped and then thread this piece and just make a piece that fits on there. I think that's going to be my my best solution if uh, if this piece is sort of solid. Let's try to pop this apart and let's see what's inside it. Alright, so I broke this loose. Let's go ahead and take this off and see what's in here. So here's just a aluminum back casing with a couple of threads in it. Almost looks like the same size as uh, what's on your garden hose. Then inside here we have the second half of the inside with the little spring washer. Just aluminum housing, nothing more to it. And then here are the goods. So we've just got two bearings. Uh, in case you want to know what these are, these are MMB uh, 608Zs. Ha! Huh. Skate bearings, I think. I think those are the same size. Probably are. So you could actually buy these spindles online, but I couldn't, you know, tell what was what and what I needed. Anyway, so there it is. Um, this inside diameter is obviously a lot bigger than my motor diameter, but uh, it's simple as that. You can unscrew this and then take these two bearings off and replace the bearings if you need to. So originally I was going to make one of these, but like I said, just this one metal part here, to make that and make it precise and make it right and have the collets fit, it's just a lot of work. So it's easier just to purchase one in this case. So now my goal is to either make an attachment that either fits on the outside of this or fits on the inside of this. Either way, I'm probably going to need to make sure I fill this space properly so that um, it doesn't have much vibration. So let's see how tight this actually fits in here. Oh yeah, it's a perfect fit, which was another one of my concerns. Can't have much play, if any at all, if it's going to be a spindle for a high-speed device like this. Well, that's pretty simple, isn't it? So, in the next upcoming videos, we're going to be tearing this thing up. We're going to be making some custom parts, figuring how to hack some parts, and uh, mount some things, and all sorts of stuff. So, I guess we'll see you on the flip side.